Hi, welcome to this video in which we are going to explore an exciting new product in the renewable energy portfolio that is beginning to see commercialization. We are talking about airborne wind turbines. They are a reality and they are here to stay. On this channel Synergy Files, we aim to inspire people towards engineering and technology for a better, more sustainable world. Subscribe today for notification to videos and information feed. You might have heard about airborne wind turbines and you might have seen a picture or two of them. Looking at them, one feels that they are one of those futuristic technologies that will never fulfill their promise. The reality is there is work going on concurrently in many areas of the world not for prototype testing but for incorporating them for commercial use. Interestingly, the concept of airborne wind turbines is not new and was first presented by Miles Lloyd in the 1970s but it is only recently that it has been picked up. And contrary to the popular belief, they are not expensive. It has been reported that energy can be generated through them for as low as 3 cents per kilowatt hour. Airborne wind turbines sound complicated compared to your run-of-the-mill horizontal axis wind turbines. From their name, we get a sense of a wind turbine that is mounted on a flying machine. Is it really that complicated? If so, why are we pursuing them? Firstly, we look at the why. Well, we all know that wind is the second largest renewable resource after sun and can power humanity 200 times over than its current requirements. And wind becomes more consistent with altitude. Not only that, but the quality of wind is also much better with little induced turbulence in it at higher altitudes. And also the wind speed is much higher. It has to be noted that with the passage of time, we are adding more and more renewables in our energy mix. With this comes the problem of variability of resource. Wind energy is intermittent and inconsistent, particularly close to ground level. However, we can get access to more consistent wind with increasing altitude. Therefore, harnessing wind at higher altitude promises many more hours of wind energy which would reduce the variability factor. If we look at the planetary boundary layer, we find that wind blowing close to the surface of the Earth is much slower. At heights of 300 meters and above, we start approaching very close to free stream velocity of wind and the wind speed at that height can be almost double the value than at 10 meters above the surface. Furthermore, as the wind at such high levels is far away from ground-based obstacles, it has less turbulence in it. Note that turbulence is undesirable because it can induce damaging vibrations in the blade. So this explains the impetus of collecting energy from higher altitude. But building towers for this purpose is expensive and impractical and not to mention extremely time consuming. And it is for this reason that we use the simplest of flying machines to lift the wind turbines up. These flying machines are tethered. The purpose of the tether in most cases is twofold. Not only the tether keeps the flying machine anchored to a certain area, but it also serves as a power supply line. Various designs have emerged for airborne wind turbines. Some are lighter than air systems, while others are heavier than air systems. An example of lighter than air system is the Boston-based Alteros Energies turbine that uses a helium-filled balloon shroud to lift the wind turbine into the air. It transfers the resultant power down to a base station through the same cables that are used to control the shroud. It has to be understood that power has a cubic relationship with wind speed. In other words, if the wind speed gets doubled as it does in higher altitudes, then we can generate 8 times more power using the same length of propeller blades. And hence with airborne wind turbines, even with smaller wind turbine blades, we are able to generate a lot more energy. Moreover, we don't need the yaw systems that we do in conventional turbines for making them face the wind. This also helps to keep the airborne wind turbines simpler. Another type of design is the fixed wing airborne wind turbine which operates with a greater degree of control. Makani, a company owned by Google, has produced this type of turbine in which the turbine blades can also act as a propeller to lift the system up when needed. Likewise, the propellers can also help to land the whole system. The fixed wing airborne wind turbines have very high lift to drag ratios just like in gliders. 
Tether may be used to supply the power to the wind turbine initially when it is taking off, but once it is airborne and is flying in its loop pattern, the same tether feeds the energy to the ground power station. More simple airborne systems also exist, such as the fabric wing-based airborne wind turbines. In Scotland, a company called KPS has developed a dual kite system. In this system, the tension in the tether created by the lift of the kite spools it out from the drum on the ground that is connected to a generator, and as a result, electricity is created. This system is being tested across various sites in Scotland. The beauty of airborne wind turbine system is that they can be deployed in very little time. The whole systems can weigh 10 times less than their ground mounted counterparts and so are easy to transport. They can be set up very quickly in areas affected by disaster. At present we have airborne wind turbines that can produce as much as 600 kilowatts but developers are working towards scaling up the output to megawatt levels. Let's hope this technology flourishes and we get energy from devices with a substantially lower footprint and with more consistency. And with this the video is concluded. If you learned something from the video make sure you hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for your attention.